on this episode of All Rock Garage, we're cleaning up the trash. Welcome back to Hot Rod Garage. I'm Lucky Costa, and today, as always, we have my good friend, Alex Taylor. Sup, how are you? Good friends for a few episodes now. I mean, we're not in a yet, so we're doing good. All right. So the plan for this week is to dig into the trash. We are dumpster diving with the Grand Trashinal, trying to find some power. I know it's in there. I personally have never seen it. Yes. Are you familiar with this thing? I, I, I did do some homework. I saw on the first episode, you guys dove into this. You got the cheapest running turbo Buick in the country for $3,800. You guys started with interior, rush repair, and all that. Went to the track and did 1483 at 96.86 mile an hour. And then episode two and three, which you weren't here for, Tony and Jimmy swapped to an 87 motor, intercooled, bigger turbo, Holly controls, gear start transmission, but still only made 255 wheel horsepower at 16 and a half pounds of boost. Is that good? And no, no, it leaves so much room for improvement. Perfect, because we're here to do that. I mean, the good thing is we can only go up from here. I don't think anybody checked the specs on the cam. The cam just came in the motor. It does need some digging, but some diagnostics. And then a new heads and cam. Heads and cam are a nice combination. You like that? Yeah. Okay. Running diagnostics on something this old is not what you're thinking. We're not plugging in, we're not reading anything, we're not playing video games. We put a dial indicator on the rockers, crank the motor over slow, right. be able to see if there's any flat cam lobes, maybe see where the overlap is, take the timing cover off the front, check the timing in the front. We have to do all that before we can put all that goodness on here. And so with all that goodness and all that diagnostic, we are going to make this make power this time, right? That's exactly right. That's the plan. I'm getting turning wrenches, you're making power. Oh, I like that, I'm not mad about that. All right, are we good? I think we're good here. Before we get into all that, I'd like to introduce you to one more drama. And we're here. Right here, with this. Some kind of sorcery. I know, right? You know what this is, by the way? I Refresh me. How old are you? It's before my time. So this is a 1992 Turbo V6 Typhoon. This thing was almost 300 horsepower in 1992. This is all wheel drive for the road. When the Typhoon comes to town, everything gets wrecked. No, that's a hurricane. No, you're definitely wrong. That's a hurricane. You totally tried. Wrong. What year were you born? 97. <laughs> before you were born, <laughs> something I thought I'd never say, before you were born, 300 horsepower was a lot. With room for the kids and groceries in the back. Yes. It does not get better than this. It, I actually am excited about it. Oh, none of that really applies to this car. This thing is, I don't, I don't, I don't know where they got this thing. Okay, so you're telling me we're gonna go for double punishment today. Yes, double punishment. We have a broken Grand National, which was the stuff back in the, the day. The stuff. And we have a Typhoon. It really fits well with this this Grand National over here. And you still need a driver for when you're in town, right? If we can make it cool, then deal. But until then, let's get to work. Job security. Sweet. Check engine light. What do you think that could be? It says check gauges, check brakes, and check engine. Why don't you check the engine? Stand clear. That's a knock. OK, so it did start. Yeah. You heard it run? It did run. Unfortunately, the knock. The knock is real. It is real, I did hear it, but yeah. it didn't sound like too detrimental really, yet. Yeah, the lifter yeah. sounded okay. We know the ignition system works, yeah. so it's not, it's just starving for fuel. Ready to tear it down? I say let's get started. <laughs> Try to lean towards you. Slide her back, keep going. We did it. We were getting ready to snatch the motor out. I've done this on a couple other projects. The body only comes in contact with the frame at the body mounts, uh, front core support, uh, brake lines, which is at the front and rear brake line. It makes perfect sense that we spend a you know, couple hours just it's taking the body off. Sounds complicated. But it's not. It's, it's not. really not. It's simple. Dirty hand contest. Stop. Oh. I just washed them. High five. I just, well, I High can't. <laughs> I can't. I just washed them. She I did just wash her hands. She I was did. filthy a minute ago. Somebody's been in here, every little corner. It's you. <laughs> Warning, breaking seal will void vehicle warranty. Oh no, let me just break this seal. 
Are you vertically challenged? I am vertically challenged. Can you reach that? I'll hold that and you can look <laughs> at it. I can't reach that. I'm sorry, my bad. Take her away. I don't know what this guy drove through, but it tastes terrible. There you go. Shanks. Yeah. Remember to smile and have your mouth open when you're doing that? Oh, yeah. So, yeah, this was the easy way. Super duper <laughs> easy. Steering's unhooked. I think everything's Brake actually ready. Brake lines away. Yeah. Nothing in the back. All right, so uh, going up. Watch your nails. Hang on, hang on. You need a boost? Um, no. Keep going. Oh, hold. OK. That's it for this episode of Monster Truck Garage. Hey, there's a hair tie. You need it? Oh, I was going to get my hair did. Mm -hmm. Bring her down. Bring her up. Hold, please. Whoa. Hold it. Oh, that's a mess. Six hours later. That wasn't so hard, was it? Yeah, super easy. So you want to throw this on the engine stand? Engine stand, get it pulled apart, ready to go to machine shop, get it down to a long block. That way they can do their stuff over there. And then you've got quite the project ahead of you, right. too. Now, you're going to do something new I've not heard of. What's it called? Bag and tag. See, that's boost management I learned and bag and tag. I don't get it. You know, at least we have one of the two. OK, I'll be over here hacking and thrashing. So uh... right, I'm going to bag and tag, you hack and thrash. OK. So while Alex is working on that cream puff in the other stall, I want to try and find out exactly why this thing isn't making the horsepower it should be making. It could be a million things. I'm thinking somebody was doing some magic with the cam timing. When we get the front of the motor off, the accessory drive, the water pump, we will get access to the front of the cam. Snatch the intake off, take the valve covers, coils, all that stuff. It's got to come off, and we'll get a look inside there. Cover me. Going in. Yeah. Uh <coughs> So, Alex Taylor. Yes, Lucky Costa. See a nice little pile of parts over there. How's your bag and tagging thing well, working Well, I've not out? got to the bag and tag. I've got to the pile and organize, and then we'll get to the bag and tag. Can I see your hands, please? Look at that. Very impressed. Thank you. All right. How's it going over there? Yeah, pretty good. Getting ready to have another beverage right now. OK, talk to you later. Bye. So I have all the bolts hardware, the harmonic balancer, the lower pulley, the accessory drive, everything is removed. There's a water pump that bolts to a timing cover, which is also a water pump housing. And then the oil pump is attached to it, so there's a little bit of Mopar in there, too. I'm going to take it all out in one shot, or I'm going to fail fabulously. Ugh. All right, the bag and tag method does exist. I got bags, and I got a pin so I can tag. So I'm just going to go through and put things in bags. Once you see the process, it's going to make sense. You still bagging and tagging over there? Still bagging and tagging. Me too. <laughs> you could get everything in one bag. I don't know why you're wasting all those bags. This is California. Save a bag. So I took out the number one spark plug, cranked it around until I felt compression on my finger. Thumbs up twice. Make sure it's a compression stroke. I'm going to use the screwdriver. And I'm going to find approximate top dead center. As I crank it, I can feel the piston coming up. Feel it right there. That right there is about top dead center on the compression stroke should be able to look at the pulleys on the front of the cam and the crankshaft. There should be two alignment dots for cam timing. So that's all correct. My diagnosis is it could be an emissions cam. It could be anything. It's a performance cam. I don't see anything performance about it. We'll be able to do a compression test, make sure the pistons are doing all this. They make, we, this could have dish pistons in it. It could have, you know, who knows. So we'll pull it apart and go further into it until it breathes fire. Because that's how we rock here at Hot Rod Garage. Wow, no. Those are parts of somebody's wallet right there. <laughs> is that metal? Yeah, it's that's full on. Oh, that's metal. That yeah. silicone. Wow. Almost, almost there. Glad I didn't <laughs> drop it. Look at that. See the little slots for the alignment piece yeah. to stop it from spinning? Oh, they're gone. They're gone. Yep, <laughs> it spun a bearing. 
that kind of wraps up this for now. I'm gonna finish bagging, tagging, cleaning up, then we're gonna put it all on, hopefully a pallet, and send it off and let it be somebody else's problem for a little bit, and then uh, jump and focus all of our attention over to the Grand National. And it's gonna need all of our attention. It needs attention, yeah. lots of it. But I think that's it for the I'm day, fine. right? Yep. Dirty hand contest, <laughs> win. Actually, I think we just tied because you smeared all that crap on me. <laughs> you want more? No, good. Okay. So you done with that little dream boat over there? I mean, it's as done as it's going to be for right now. Did you order up the 44-inch tires for it? I think that's kind of a cool idea. I actually Hashtag like that. Hashtag David Chappelle. <laughs> Dirt every day. We're coming for you. <laughs> I mean, I think it'd be kind of cool. But the real question is, like, where's where's the rest of it under here? No, that's it. So you didn't find what you were hoping to find? No, I was really hoping to find that the cam timing was way off or the chain had stretched or slipped or... I don't know, I took it apart and it said Kia or something on it, but everything looks absolutely <laughs> correct. I doubt it's the tune. I'm guessing it's just the combination. Motors are super sensitive, but fortunately enough, we have another set of heads, new camshaft, and hydraulic roller lifters, all designed to go in this motor and make it run good. So we're gonna like cross our fingers and hope on this, this combination. Welcome to Hot Rod Garage. I could have sharpened those a little more. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Uh, yeah. <laughs> little dish pistons, too, for a boost. So all the old is out. You want to take a minute and tell these guys what's going on? Actually, I'd love to. Let's go. Okay, it is time to talk performance upgrades, which I think our Grand National is desperately in need of. Our friends over at Cruise Performance hooked us up with a package which included heads that have been ported in machine. These new valves are Ferreira stainless valves with packs, springs, retainers, and keepers. They set us up with a new cam, new shaft, roller rockers, and new lifters. Um, they actually have the same chamber size, 46cc, but we do have a slightly larger exhaust valve, which is a 1.6 over here compared to the 1.5. The larger exhaust valve is going to be beneficial because the more exhaust that we can get out is the more exhaust we can get to the turbo. So once Lucky gets our mystery cam out over there, we'll talk specs as we're installing this later, but we do know that it is perfectly paired with the package that Cruz sent us. Okay, right now it is cam o'clock. I go to the front and take the cam gear off, and then we will extract the cam. I am so close to camshaft, I can taste it. Look at that. Seems like this cam should be a lot longer. Such a cute little guy. It is. So this is a cruise cam. It's ground by comp competition cams. It's a called the 210 roller cam. Apparently there's some technology in camshafts and it's all top secret. This is the stock cam. They're pretty close to parallel all the way down. You can see this is a lot wider at the top, which means the valve is gonna stay open longer. This one's a little sharper. This one obviously goes a little bit higher, which means the valve is gonna open further. I can tell it's a lot more camshaft and more flow equals more go. This is gross. I've been trying to save all the gross jobs for Alex, but apparently she's in a meeting or something. I don't know. Cam's going in. Gotta go with Chuck Norris on that. Lift it up with my bare hands. Something's happening. With the Cruise Performance camshaft installed, taking special care as to make sure the thrust washer is all aligned and lubricated, I'm going to put on the timing set. That would be the upper cam gear, the crank gear, and the timing chain, which is a double roller. By double roller, it literally has two sets of gears, top and bottom. If you look at the old stuff, it only has one. I'm just gonna tap this on right now so I can rotate the cam, get it back and forth, and get it set up. Whoa, what? That's crazy. These are multi-layered gaskets for boosted application. And boost, in case you didn't know, is the answer to all your problems. Okay, so we have some new Morel roller hydraulic lifters. So we're gonna go ahead and get those soaking while we go ahead and prep the block to put the heads on. Soaking these so that way we can start them up when they're already primed and ready to go instead of starting with a dry lifter. All right, pull the gasket. I'm blowing the gasket. Yeah, I think I hurt myself. So here are the uh, hydraulic roller lifters. Cool deal here is they have little rollers on the bottom, see them spinning, and they roll on the camshaft. With the roller, less friction means more power. These have a dog bone, prevent them from spinning. Sort of a lifter guide. Well, you said your push rods were too long. They definitely were. I came over and saw it wasn't gonna work. So right. 
We have an arsenal of push rods. Here's some eight inch ones. Okay, so the gig was we've gone from regular hydraulic lifter mm -hmm. to a hydraulic roller. So it ended up changing the push rod length. This is how you confirm the length. I'm taking a Sharpie and I'm just putting a mark on top of each valve. And then you will set the rocker shaft assembly on. I'm gonna crank it over. Is that it? You're good. What she's looking at there is the alignment dots, making sure we're right back at top dead center. And now you can look at the top of the valve and see exactly where the rocker is hitting. Yeah, right in the middle. That's where the rocker's pushing on the valve. I feel good about that. Eight is the number. So when you're out doing your racing thing, you have like a crew jump out and just be, hey, didn't like it, fix it. No. Like when I've been doing this, driving the Pro Mod, it's weird because I don't actually touch it that much. Right. Words I never thought I heard from anybody. When I was driving the Pro Mod the other day. Go ahead. <laughs> Go ahead, don't rub it in at all. New day, are you ready? New day, I uh, am ready. Apparently the elves that come in at night and put cars together. They didn't show up. Didn't get the memo. I have to fix that. We have no, we are the elves. Oh shoot. It's crazy. So it looks like we're waiting for some parts. However, we do have some headers to put on these. Have you seen those headers? Yeah, and they are nice. They so, are nice. Cruise Performance sent these over. They're a stainless fabricated header and they look killer. Check out those welds. They go to a two inch collector, which I mean, seems small. Right. But I think it's big for what we're working with Right, here. and I think with this motor, every little bit counts. So uh, dive into your complicated bolts over there and I'll take this easy <laughs> side. <laughs> this is a tuned exhaust system. So we will mock these up and then set the turbo on here because these are for like stock application, what do they call it? Factory replacement, style three, in case you're wondering. Get rid of grip. Yep. Wow, I think that's actually gonna, look at that, Dang, you see that? that's awesome. This car has a track day coming up pretty soon. So you know what, I have an idea. We can Camaro nap the Camaro. Yeah. Get them both out there. We have that hunting nines goal. I feel like it was almost dialed, we just ran out of time, so. Maybe once we get this one under control, get a couple more passes. Yeah, I'm okay. down with that. Cool. So we just have a few parts left, um, some gaskets, then we start putting on the intake and putting all this super simple wiring back on. And then this thing should be breathing fire. All right, we need parts. Okay. Oh, Grasshopper, you have much to learn. Do it again. I'm passing stuff on. Oh, please, we're doing sorcery here. Burn the witch! <laughs> <laughs> well, these are factory gaskets, and they're already notched. So you can put two bolts in to hold the header in place, and then you just drop those puppies right down there. We're gonna move on to the intake right now. I have to do it real quick because I made a front valley gasket, rear valley gasket out of silicone. So the deal here is to get it lined up and set down in one easy motion, like that. <laughs> but did it almost fall into place? I almost fell someplace. Holy cow, it's falling together. Turbo's going in. Boom. Pretty good fit right there. Yeah. <laughs> so we're getting pretty close to wrapping this up. Lucky is finishing up the turbo over there, and then he's going to pop over and put accessories on. And uh, we should be pretty close to making some noise. <laughs> It is a new day. The gig is this thing has been put together a few times and always looked kind of cool, but has never made power. I think we have a date with the dyno coming up. And if it makes horsepower there, we might go somewhere else. I'm ready to go to track. That's yeah. what that was. You like the track. I like the track. Okay. <laughs> we gone. Let's put it up because we have to put the crossover pipe on. Nice. Ready? Are you ready for magic? Yeah. Ow, that's gonna leave a mark. I feel good about that. Give it a shot? Yeah, see if she kicks over. I mean, fires up. Well, 
pressure? Yeah, we got oil pressure. Nice. The fuel does not smell good at all. So right now we're dealing with stuff like potentially bad fuel. Things have been sitting for a while, um, injectors out. I mean, things have been sitting around for a minute. We put what's supposed to be in here, in here. Still having the same issues. Hard start conditions, doesn't want to idle, lots of issues like that. So what I'm gonna do right now is pull the spark plug wire partially off. I'm gonna crank it over and you'll be able to see a spark jumping from the end of the coil into the cup of the wire. Crank her over. Stop. All right, so we have a good spark there. Cranky, cranky. Stop. Crank it over. Stop. That's good. All the coils seem to be putting out spark just like they're supposed to. Now I'm going to pull out a wire and see if that spark is getting to the other end of the party. OK, these things are pretty wet. I wonder if that injector's hung, and it's just dumping fuel in it. Oh, you know what, this injector? The clips broke. Maybe it just wasn't in all the way. Go again. What's the temp? 144. Okay, it's running. It is running. It's running decent. I'm gonna go out on a limb and say it's running better than it's ever run. And it's still running terrible. Yeah, it's running terrible, but it's running decent compared to what it was. It idles, at least. So this is California, it's the middle of the day. Go for a spin? Load it on the trailer. Load it on the trailer? I just don't, <laughs> I just don't see it making Load it Load it on the trailer, turn on the AC and drive to the dyno. Yeah. Ready to go? Let's do it. So we're here at Balta Performance. We're getting it up on the rack right now on the dyno uh, to find out. A we're going to check a couple things. We're going to check the compression, check the valve adjustment, check a couple things before we put some heat into it. And then it's going to be all about spit and fire and eating imports. We are evaluating what our situation looks like. As we sit there and try to crank it over, it's got that low compression, like it's speeding up and slowing down. So we're going to see if that or if it's just truly misfiring or if it's stuff we can fix today. The other thing is that the O2 bung is pre-turbo. We're going to move the location of that so we can get a little bit ac more accurate read. So something tells me the Grand Trashinal may continue its reputation for at least another day. Right now I'm going to crank it over until it comes up to top dead center and I will check the lash on the rockers to see if it's holding a valve open. The number one cylinder is the weakest one. So if that makes any sort of a difference, we'll just check them all. Well, Lucky is readjusting the preload on the lifters over there. I've already got the super hot O2 sensor undone from below the turbo, and then I'm gonna weld the new one over on post turbo side. Hey, let me help. Can I get some of your big blockness here? Big blockness, I like that. I'm okay with that. The guns, the muscle, the strength, the horsepower. I'll put it in stitches mode. We're in. It's a good in a bit right there. On this episode of Hot Rock Ride, we turn up the heat. There's the temperature right there. What was once only 130 is now 214, which means it's hitting on all the holes. The car sounds so much better than it did leaving the shop. Turns out it wasn't anything major, which is a great deal. Just a little bit of adjustment, a so little wait, bit of we, movement. We didn't break it? We haven't broken it yet. We found dead cylinders, fix those. Mm -hmm. uh, dead plugs, fix those. Yep. Relocated the O2 sensor so it actually reads information as opposed to it was in the emissions position before. Yeah. Getting ready to fire it up and put some heat into it. You'll be able to see everything on the telemetry on the flat screen right behind me. Check this out. So, Alex, you know the front seal I put in wrong and it's leaking oil like crazy? We gotta hurry, we're running out of oil. We are running out of oil. Okay, here we go. So it looks like our best torque is 400 to 1. That was at like 4,200 RPMs. And we made 357 horsepower at like 5,200 RPM. That's like win, win, win. This is win. already a win. I and mean, that's just, this party's just started. Even if that's where we ended, I'd be happy. But I feel like there's more in it, and I want to see more. More is better. We 
we had about 378 horsepower, which is 2530 horsepower increase. And then we saw 411 pounds of torque. And we're up to 5700 RPM now, too. Are you a turbo guy or are you a blower? You guy? know what? I'm boost. I just like boost. I don't care where I get it from. Okay. Fair enough. Ready? Three seventy four and four oh one. Well, that's all the oil we got, ladies and gentlemen. So I'd say that's a pretty successful day. We are very successful. Success. I would say I'm very happy with those numbers. We had 378. Which um, is about 440 to the crank. That's a win. That's amazing is what that um, is. We had about 411 foot-pounds of torque. Which is about 480 foot-pounds of torque at the crank. That's pretty dang good. And they're the best numbers we've had ever on this car. That's a win. That's, a, that's amazing. So that sets us up with the perfect numbers to head to the track after this. And we have some upgrades we can still do. That makes me happy. I like the idea of more boost. Injectors, uh, wastegate. Um, has a small oil leak. I don't know if you noticed. It's only a tiny one. Technically, it's one drip. We're out it's of oil. this big. But I say we call it there. OK, that's it. Wrap on the day. We rock. Here we are from Mozo Drag Strip in beautiful Bakersfield, California. Have you been here before? I have, last time. Just remember? last time we were here? Yeah. I think you were like doing wheelies or something here. The little baby one. The wheelie's a wheelie. The wheelie's you a wheelie. Slice it. So when this thing was brand new and shiny, it ran like a 15.7. I think the best we've been able to do with this thing is right around 15. It ran just a little bit better than stock, but it had a lot of issues, RPM issues. I did hear on the dyno last time, it's only like going right over 3,000 RPM. And we saw when we had it on the dyno this time, we at least saw higher RPM. So mm -hmm. that should have some kind of payoff out here as yeah. well. Almost 400 horsepower to the rear wheel. We've thrown a bunch of parts at it. Cylinder heads, cam, tune, new headers. So it has a great turbo on it. And we're hoping for good numbers. Yeah. What's our target? Um, OK, I mean, I feel like as, as long as we don't slow down, that's a good first step. Nice. So low 14s, mid 14s, low 14s. We just need to see some kind of improvement. Wow, that's very generous of you. I'm yeah, trying. I think we can do that. We just want to at least get it down the track. Nice. And I pretty much just want to drive the Zamboni. You ready to hit the track? Yes. I'll grab the mop. I'll see you up at the line. That is so disheartening. <laughs> just keeping it real. Put on the helmet, we set the seat. She's just gonna do a shakedown pass. Pretty confident it's gonna run good. She's not messing around today. One, three, at 105. I'm not going to say I told you so, but that was like the fastest that car's ever gone. When it went from one to two, it definitely squeaked the tires just a little bit, but didn't break traction to the point that it was an issue. I believe on that pass, it's making as much power as it's going to. The car's just a cruiser. Was it pinning your back a little bit? Nope. I'm like, well, what do I want to eat for lunch? Sunday cruise. That looks nice over there. Good scenery yeah. here. If you put a six second girl into a <laughs> 15 second car. This is what you get right here. Yeah, so it is a big mess. Is this that seal that we were dealing with on the dyno? No, it's not from over there. Really? It's a different area? The oil pan's clean and dry. It's possibly the front main. So still got a minor oil leak. Uh, by minor, don't look, don't look down and to the left. Oops. We're going to pull it over here in the shade, and we're going to put a flashlight on that oil deal. Yeah, so uh, you know the oil leak we had at the dyno? Yeah. Still have it. Get some tools to get this party started. We don't have any tools that we need. Cheese and rice. I found lots of oil. I'm just kind of curious as to where it's coming from. So I'm going to fire it up right now and just spool I'll it up. watch. And there. yeah, here, use this. Where's all the shade coming from? Oh, hey, Cleet. There's a lot of oil out there, man. 
Who's driving? Alex? So while Lucky is chasing our mysterious oil leak, which is all over the place, I'm going to pull the block off plates on the cutout off, so sound better and a little less restriction, so. Let's pull the jack stands out and let her down. Lucky has created a alternator excite wire, so we do have a charging system active again. And then I believe he found our oil leak. And then I have removed our block off plate, so we're going to be ready for a pass. Put the excite wire through there. Now the only way to shut the car off is going to be to unplug the alternator. Huh. Now there's some technology I'm sure you haven't seen on your high tech race car. You're right. <laughs> Okay, so we may have fixed the oil leak. We did make it louder. We are gonna run faster. Let's just keep calling these shakedowns. So the only thing left on the track is water. We should check the oil. A little bit more power made it spin just a little bit. I pedaled it too much, killed the boost I made. So I doubt that's going to be better. We'll see. Changing my launch strategy. Yeah, yeah. 1520. That much boost made it spin off the line. So we're going to go back to rolling into it. Just exactly. Yep. That's what I say. Life right there. Back it uh, looks like a 1473 at 98.14 miles per hour. 1473. So I don't know that it likes it with a cutout open. It may need more restriction. Right. So while Alex is under there putting the block off plate back on. What I want to do is get some of our little absorbent pads and uh, probably zip tie them to the oil filter because it's laying right next to where the oil is coming out. Hopefully catch some of that before Cleet catches me. Back it out. Oh, oh, get it off. Let's ask the track official if this is OK. Cleet, think it still has a small oil leak? You think this is OK? Yeah, no, there's not enough dry sweep in the world for that. No? All right, my bad. But for occasions not so rare, we do bring a spare. Yeah, that gives us more time to like chase some nines. We're going to make a few passes with our bone marrow and see if we can't get a little closer to those elusive nines. The only tool that we have to tune the turbo with is this basic dial, which increases or decreases boost pressure to the wastegate. We're going to make some more adjustments that hopefully gives us a little bit more boost before the safety kicks in. Let me tune it. Let me tune it to zero. That's closed all the way. OK, perfect. So we've confirmed. This is all oh, the way. Give me a minute. I, I do want to know the clicks, because I'm trying to get a reference point. All right, hold, hold, please. Hold, please. So that's closed all the way. No air, no boost is going from the turbo to the wastegate. You guys just trying to make me hyperventilate? <laughs> Could you confirm? Don't do it. Could you? Don't do it. Total flow to no flow. Can you right. find that number of clicks and then put it back to zero? <laughs> okay, that's open all the way. That? Five clicks. Okay. <laughs> so this should be the exact same setup that it was last time when we ran the 1016, except now we have a little bit more pressure flowing through here, a little bit more air flowing through here, so the wastegate won't open at as low of boosts. So now that I have a close personal relationship with the boost management, <laughs> proud of you. Uh, let's get on the track. Somebody is not messing around today. Let's do it. We hit a safety. That made a lot of boost. Considering we were supposed to be ramping into it slowly, maybe all that blowing onto the valve, like I could have been backwards. I don't know. It could have been the other way. My bad. We'll have to go pull a data log. Launch decent. I think we hit a safety. You could take this 
and plug in and do all that other stuff you do. Perfect. Do the thing you do. Yup, that definitely says safety. I say we go all the way in and back off, like you said. Okay. It's been too many cars ago. We've got our thoughts backwards here, but Lucky is, um, you know, really using his method that he figured out earlier. Look at him go. Tried to burn my nose on the turbocharger. <laughs> Tried to cook my beak off. Sounded pretty sticky. is at 120.77 miles per hour. I feel like this thing's low on water or something because it's getting hot so fast. We are still fighting that boost management issue. My contention is analog is good. She's trying to get all digital and CO2 controlled and I don't know, technology involved, I don't know. Yeah, she's gonna win this battle. It's making 18 pounds of boost, which I'd be happy with that. And then the rest of the pass, it slowly trails off to like eight pounds. I'm trying to science it out, but with the limited passes, like it's, it, we're playing a guessing game of what one turn does, what one click does, which direction we go. I wanna take that little thing that Lucky's playing the tune into, rip it off, throw it very far away, not out of anger, but out of happiness for the progression we're going to be making with this car. Now we're talking. There it goes. So the problem we're having, it's not building boosters on launch. This is a problem that we could work on uh, on private property by the studio. And then once we get it working good over there, we can come back out here. Because that's what this car is all about, fun fun and good times. I'm gonna lobby for some higher tech technology to match the rest of the technology that's here. Um, a turbo LS, like, it's gonna do it. It's just, we've got the Holly, we've got all the good stuff, but we're not utilizing it like we should be. So on that note, I'm ready to park this car for the day. That's it for this episode of Hot Rod Garage. The Grand Trash and all has definitely left its mark here at Famoso Drive. We Strip. can't be mad about like seven tenths improvement. Speaking of leaving its mark here, um, Cleet, I will clean up all the stains that this car left. No, you everywhere. won't. No, you won't. I'll get someone to do it for me. <laughs> so technically, the Grand Trash and did not disappoint. That's true. We wanted to make more power when we went into this. Mm -hmm. We did. Yeah, we did. We wanted to go above 3,000 RPM. Did that. We did do that. Nice. We wanted to get at least a faster pass, and we were hoping within the low 14 second range at minimum. Got there. We did do that. Mm -hmm. And I think we could have even done better, but we decided to have an oil leak all over everywhere. But it gave us more time to drag the bone marrow out. It gave us more time to figure out all the things that we need to do to the bone marrow before we drag it back out. Test in tune. Time. Test in yes. tune. But those nines are so close. We're just dealing with those finicky little things. We didn't do any better this time than I did the last time, but it's hotter, it's all the things. That's what you call excuses, right? No, those are explanations. Explanations. Right. All right, so we need to park that and we'll revisit it with better stuff mm -hmm. later. I'm gonna actually give you a little street name. Your street name now is Wheelie. Okay. I think it's all behind that trans brake you installed. Not mad about that. Let's not forget to thank all of our friends. Holly. Uh, Gearstar. Cruise Performance. Yep, Balto Performance. Balto Performance. And where are we right now? Famoso Drag Strip in beautiful Bakersfield, California. Once again, we'd like to thank our friend Cleet for not stomping on me for leaking oil <laughs> all over this entire track. Don't forget to follow us on social media. Who are you again? Alex Taylor Racing. I am Mobile Tech Lucky, and who are we right now? We are Hot Rod Garage Show on all the platforms. Cool. Ready to go? I'm ready to do it, but I think you've got a mess to clean up. Um, yeah, but I get to drive the Zamboni. Probably ought to talk to Cleet about that. Ladies and gentlemen, please take your seats. The show is about to begin.
set out, we wanted to make more power. Rup. 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 Rup it did. Yep. And we, <laughs> we wanted... Okay, sorry. <laughs> sorry, I turned into Scooby there for a moment. Rup. I would never steal this in front of you. I would never swing by here in the middle of the week and tell your boys that you said I was supposed to pick this up either. What you got there, Alex? Well, you said there push on... Bip. Bip, 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 bip. Well, you... Use your inside voice. <laughs>